Today on Focal Point, we're going to learn what it's like to be behind the wheel as Car Corner's host with the college's Automotive Technology Assistant Professor, Dan Reed. We're also checking out how much students know about their government and taking a look at one of the college's many clubs. Stay with us. Welcome to Focal Point here on CCP-TV, the educational channel of Community College of Philadelphia. I'm Darlene Muntz, a student in the Communication Arts Curriculum. We have a very interesting program today and a special guest, Car Corner's host, Dan Reed. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing pretty well. Dan is an assistant professor in an automotive technology curriculum and has been with the college since 1997 and teaching since 2000. Some of the courses he teaches in the auto tech program are Introduction to Automotive Technology, Basic Electric Systems, and Engine Repair. Based in CCP's West Regional Center, his students learn the necessary skills and experience that will lead them to a promising career in the automotive industry. Hello, Dan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Please share with us what Car Corner is about. A cooking show format with cars. <laughs> so basically show people um, uh, what's involved with a specific car repair. There's usually, you know, there's one topic okay. uh, per episode. Mm -hmm. And I try to uh, give, give folks a little bit of uh, a background sometimes okay. some of the history of how this component of a vehicle evolved, mm -hmm. um, and then some of the ways that they tend to fail, a little bit about how they work, and then we actually go through and uh, perform a, you know, a replacement procedure of, of whatever that component is we're talking about. How did the show first start? The show started about four years ago. Okay. Um, I was approached by some of the staff here at the college when they were basically revamping the, the television station, the mm -hmm. network here at the college. And they um, uh, approached us to do a TV show mm -hmm. that was sort of uh, a showcase, a little bit about the program, and then also a little bit of um, uh, a do-it-yourself DIY um, type of show. So mm -hmm. we just, you know, give people a little bit of an educational background, mm -hmm. and um, we uh, we've done 45 shows, wow. which uh, yeah, we, we've done a lot of sh a, a good number. Aside from being on TV or up on YouTube, are there any differences between doing the show and the classes you teach? It's different in okay. the sense that, um, you know, you don't see it as a first-person student experience. Mm -hmm. But really, the work that we do on the show, um, the the tools, the equipment, the cars, mm -hmm. um, those are the same. It's the same equipment that the students utilize. What do your students think about your show? It's interesting because I've had students that that come to school. Mm -hmm. You know, the show's been on now for four years, mm -hmm. and they don't even know that the show exists. So I get students that, you know, they, they're students here at CCP. They don't even know that the show is on. Um, and at the opposite end of that, I actually have students that found out about our program through the TV show, so okay. they obviously know about it. Now, what we do is um, occasionally we'll use... Um, snippets because the show is available on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, we'll use snippets sometimes in the in the classroom okay. um, because there's there's some things that can just be shown in a nice short block mm -hmm. or there maybe there was a really good camera sequence that really captured um, what we're going to be doing in the lab so I'll show them that ahead of time and then I'll have them go out and, and then do the work in the shop. Is that what made them come to CCP? Um, I don't want to say that they came because of me, okay. but what I really like about the show is that it, it gives the general public a chance to really see um, a little bit about what we do when okay. we teach. We're going to shift gears for a moment and take a quick look at Car Corner. Welcome to Car Corner. Today, we're going to be talking about electric starter motors. What we have here is we have our Honda Accord and it has uh, possibly an internal engine problem. It has, a, it has a misfire. Airbags, while they have saved 
countless lives. They are extremely dangerous to work with while you're working on a car. Thanks for watching Car Corner. Drive safely. Are you rolling? Your episode also features bloopers on the show. How often do you mess up or goof up while you're on camera? Some of the bloopers are, are genuine. Okay. Um, other ones, you know, we're there for four or five hours. Our shop is, uh, is unfortunately not air conditioned. So with the, with the lights uh, from the film crew, um, it gets to be pretty hot. And okay. uh, sometimes I just need a silly break. <laughs> so um, we'll, I'll, I'll sort of just come out of character just to make myself laugh and break the tension. Aside from seeing you play around on the set, what are some of the benefits that the student and audience can get from seeing the program? I try to pick topics that are, that are typical repairs that people might have to have paid for. Um, and I want to show that. I want to show what you got. You know, not just mm -hmm. that somebody took your money and then now your car's fixed. It's not magic. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot of the general public, think that maybe it's just it's done through a computer and it's a ripoff or something like that, but it really isn't. I mean, there's really a lot of physical work. Um, there's a lot of investment in okay. tools and, and personal training that technicians go through. And uh, I like to show that. Um, oh, okay. That's, that's to, to me, that's part of the goal of the show. What can we look forward to next season? So what we have is um, we have a couple really uh, neat episodes coming up. Um, okay. One is... Um, a uh, student of ours, a uh, student here at the college, mm -hmm. actually has built a uh, competition level uh, drifting race car. Okay. Um, built it himself, um, and uh, it's a really, really neat piece. It's a, it's a, it's a race car. It's not a street legal car that's kind of done up to be a part-time race car. This is a full-time race car, and the student um, Joe Sheridan has really put a lot of effort into it, and. Uh, was kind enough to bring the car down to our shop, mm -hmm. um, which I had to come on a trailer because you can't drive it on the street, okay. bring it into the garage, and then uh, give give basically Car Corner a tour of, of what he did to the car. And then um, in the process of that, explaining the differences between a, a street car and, uh, and a, a car made for a track. You can catch Car Corner on CCP TV every day at 4 p.m. and midnight on Comcast Channel 53 or Fios Channel 21. Full episodes are also available on YouTube by subscribing to CCP TV's YouTube channel, CCP TV 53. Thank you for being with us, Dan. Thanks for having me. How much do you know about the government? Do you even know who your state representatives are? Let's find out what students around campus have to say. The length of time for a senator's term is four years. Five years? Um, four years? Four years? As long as it wants. The senator can stay in Congress for six years. The White House? Washington. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C.? District of Columbia. The two parts are Houses of Congress, or the House of Representatives and the Senate. House of Representatives and the House of... Partisan and bipartisan. No, the House and the Senate. The House of Representatives and House of Senate. The date that the term of Congress begins is January 20th. No, is it in November? I believe that'll be January 30th. The date each term of Congress begins is January 1st. The minimum age for a senator is 19. 42. Um, 21. Uh, 30. 32. Minimum age. 30? 5? The highest position in Congress is the Speaker of the House. President? Speaker of the House. The President? Speaker of the House. Each state can have two senators. 17? Two. One. 
Two. Six. Each state can have two senators. The more you know can really help. Now let's check out what one of our student clubs is up to this semester. As veterans, military veterans have a deep camaraderie between the, you know, between the branches. So we wanted a place or we wanted a group where we could all get together and help the community, help um, the school and the outlining community. Going to the Army is like going to college. You're leaving home, you're going to a new place and you don't know anyone there. You don't feel comfortable. The same thing actually happens when you leave the service. You're, you again, you feel you made connections with the people you served with and when you leave you feel like you're leaving home, you're going to a new place and those people aren't there to support you anymore. CCP started in the 60s and of course after the returning veterans from Vietnam went back to school, uh, they started their own club and at that time it was called the Veterans Association. There was a lapse after the um, 70s where there was no club activity between the veterans and CCP. Um, and it wasn't until 2000, I want to say 2006, uh, I broached the subject of uh, starting up the club again with the amount of uh, returning veterans coming back from uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Being a part of the Veterans Club and just the support we're getting from the Veterans Office here has been tremendous. Um, I find it interesting that they don't have other places like this at other schools. I think this should be a part of the natural fabric of higher, higher learning. Coming to uh, places like the veteran, Student Veterans Club or the Veterans Service Office, it helps uh, connect you with people who understand where you're coming from and who can, who've already come across the obstacles you're about to come across. Organizations like the Veterans Club um, really help to reassure me and reassure veterans that you do have the, the bond, you, you can still maintain the bond, the camaraderie that you had while you were in service uh, when you get out. But the same services that are offered, uh, potentially a registration or financial aid, that same service can be given to you here if you're a veteran. I guess you kind of cut out of a lot of the time of waiting in line or uh, trying to get advice on what forms you need to fill out and how to fill them out. Every veteran should know that in a lot of uh, our educational institutions, especially in CCP, there are networks of veterans there waiting for them to help them uh, cope with the first steps they need to take in order to get back into the flow of society. Another example of the great clubs we have here at CCP. Well, that's it for today. Thank you again, Dan, for being our guest. Thank you. And I want to thank the viewers for joining us. You have been watching Focal Point, the Community College of Philadelphia's student magazine show here on CCP-TV. All segments for Focal Point are produced by students in the digital video production curriculum. I'm Darlene Munts. See you next time.